In this video, we are going to look at the speaker output settings and the RCA output settings as described in the initial setup menu called speaker mode settings for the following Pioneer models. The Pioneer AVHX 1800S, the AVHX 2800BS, the AVHX 3800BHS, the AVHX 4800BS, the AVHX 5800BHS, and the two one-din models, the AVHX 6800DVD and the AVHX 7800BT. In this demonstration, I'll be using the AVHX 5800BHS right here, uh, but be sure to note that the other models listed in this video have the identical operation. Let's start by taking a look at the back panel of the head unit. Here, we can see the RCA outputs for operating external amplifiers. The connections here are right and left for the front output when used in standard mode. These same two connections can be used as the high frequency output when used in network mode. The next pair of RCA connections are for right and left rear outputs when used in standard mode. And these same outputs can be used as the mid-range or bandpass output when used in network mode. And the lower set of RCAs here is for the subwoofer output when used in standard mode and can also be used as the low range output when operated in network mode. For the speaker outputs that operate from the head unit internal amplifier, the white and gray wires are for right and left front outputs when used in standard mode or the high output when used in network mode. The green and purple leads are used for the right and left rear outputs when used in standard mode and will operate as the mid-range or the bandpass output when used in network mode. While it is possible to run the speaker outputs as a subwoofer output when operating in the standard mode only, making that change is not shown here in this video, but it's covered in the audio settings video. When making adjustments to the system in either standard mode or network mode, Keep in mind that the speaker level outputs always output the same frequencies as the comparable RCA outputs. After the system powers up for the first time, you'll need to go through the system setup starting with the language selection. After you've chosen a language selection, the next setup question you'll see is the basic setup question about the audio system. Do you want to set up your audio system in standard mode, which is a front, rear, and possibly a subwoofer output, or do you want to set up your system in network mode, which changes the outputs from front, rear, and sub to high, mid, and low? Now please note that there are many interesting and creative ways to both install and to operate a car stereo system. The ideas expressed in this video are very simple, basic design concepts. You have to take your creativity and your knowledge to create the perfect system for your vehicle. Let's start with standard mode, or a front, rear, and sub system. In standard mode, or the front, rear, and sub setup, it's a common practice to use full range speakers, similar to the Pioneer TSA 1686R in the front door connected to the front output, and a similar full range speaker like the Pioneer TSA 6996R in the back deck connected to the rear. Many different full range speaker sizes and shapes are available from Pioneer and made to fit many different vehicles. I'll say OK here to choose the standard mode and we have to choose a phone setup. This one is fine for this demonstration so we'll touch the arrow to advance and that takes us out to our home screen. Now I'll put in my test disc Now I'm going to change to track number 50. This is my pink noise and I'm going to adjust my volume up a little. Now pink noise is a static sound that has close to the same output level across all frequencies from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. And from 20 to 20k is the generally accepted frequency range of human hearing. In pink noise, each octave, or when we cut in half or double the frequency, carries an equal amount of noise energy. That energy, or the output level from the head unit, is represented with the red dots that you see here on the real-time analyzer display. Now I'll adjust the equalizer to its flat setting. 
and I'll do a quick check on the speaker levels to make sure they're all at zero. Let's check the balance and fade. Okay, balance and fade, everything is set to zero there. That's where we want it, right in the middle. And now I'll check my crossover settings. So right now I have the RTA connected to the right front output. The RTA, or real-time analyzer, can accurately and simultaneously read the output level at each of 30 frequencies and gives us a graphical display right here on this screen. Just like a piano and on the display of the AVHX 5800 BHS, the low frequencies are over here on the left and the high frequencies are over here on the right. The RTA display reads from 25 hertz right here all the way up to 20,000 hertz over here on the right. And please note that for the purposes of this video, I have the response time of the RTA set up to be fairly slow. Making the response time slower makes it a little easier to see the changes that each setting makes. On the pink noise track, you can see that all frequencies are being played back at about the same level. And at this time, we have no crossover switched on, and so we're playing back full range or all of the frequencies. Now, let's switch on the high-pass filter crossover on the front channel and see what happens. We call this the high-pass filter, or HPF, because it lets high frequencies pass through and low frequencies are filtered out. We'll start with a high-pass filter set at a crossover point of 200 Hz and a slope of 24 dB per octave. As you can see on the RTA display, from the crossover point of about 200 hertz, all lower frequencies, shown over here to the left, are played back at a lower level. The slope of 24 dB per octave means that one octave lower, or at 100 hertz, the output is approximately 24 decibels lower than that being played back at 200 hertz. Frequencies of 200 hertz and above are not affected. The AVHX 5800 BHS has a graphical representation of the crossover point and the slope of the crossover. As you can see, the RTA shows a very similar graph of the frequencies being played back. We can change the crossover points from 200 to 160 to 125 to 100, 80, 63, and all the way down to 50 hertz. And you can set the slope of the crossover from 24 to 18 to 12 or 6 dB per octave. And as you can see, as I make the adjustments, the RTA shows the exact same adjustments on its screen. I can do the exact same process with the same crossover points and slopes for the rear outputs. The rear output crossovers can be set independently from the front output crossovers. So for right now, let's put this thing back to 24 dB per octave and I'm going to make my crossover point 200 hertz. Now, I'll set up the RTA to read the subwoofer RCA output and we'll operate the subwoofer crossover. The subwoofer crossover is an LPF, or a low pass filter, and it works exactly the opposite of the high pass filter. It lets low frequencies pass through and it filters out the higher frequencies. We'll start with the low pass filter set to 200 Hz with a slope of 24 dB per octave. And as you can see, the low frequencies to the left are playing and the high frequencies to the right are filtered out at a rate of 24 dB per octave. This is exactly what I want if I have a subwoofer in my system. 
I want the high frequencies to go to my front and rear speakers, and I want the low frequencies to go to the subwoofer. We can change the crossover point from 200 to 160, to 125, down to 100, to 80, 63, and all the way down to 50 hertz. And you can set the slope of the crossover from 24 to 18 to 12 or 6 dB per octave for any given crossover point. You also have the option to reverse the phase of the subwoofer output. Experiment in your vehicle with the phase control and the crossover point to see what works best. The front, rear, and sub crossovers operate completely independently from one another, and it is capable of overlapping settings and gaps in the settings. Okay, so what are the best crossover settings for you to use in your car? Well, that's a question that only you can answer. Now, a good place to start and experiment is a 100 Hz crossover with a 12 dB slope per octave on the front output, on the rear output, and on the sub output. From there, experiment and find out what sounds best. I recommend that you sit in your vehicle and slowly and patiently make changes to the system and listen to your favorite music while you're making the changes. Choose the settings that sound best to you for your music. Now let's take a look at the level controls for each speaker in the system. Here you can see a representation of the two full range front speakers in the system the two full range rear speakers in the system, and the subwoofer installed in the system. The level control gives us an independent volume control for each speaker in the system, and it allows us to make any given speaker a little quieter or a little louder compared to the other speakers in the system. This is a very powerful sound quality tool that can help steer the stereo image across the front of the vehicle. In this demonstration, the RTA is connected to the right front speaker, and you can see the levels changed as I make adjustments to the system. What are the best level settings to use? For best audio quality, keep the level settings at zero or lower. Instead of boosting up one speaker, consider lowering the level of the other speakers to help even out the system. By keeping each individual speaker level at zero or lower, you can turn up the master volume without fear of distortion. If you hear distortion, you may be damaging your speakers. Lowering the output levels of a particular speaker or group of speakers may remove that distorted sound. Now, let's take a look at network mode, or setting up your audio outputs as high, mid, and low. But before we take a look at network mode, let's understand something very carefully. Network mode and standard mode are two fundamentally different ways to set up, wire, and install a car stereo system. You cannot switch between standard mode and network mode without changing out speakers and your wiring system in the car. If you try to switch between these two things without swapping out speakers and changing the wiring system, you might damage or destroy your speakers. I have this AVHX 5800BHS set up as a standard mode system or a front rear sub system. Now let's change it to network mode. To do that, I'll need to do a system restore. So I'll touch the gears here and the toolbox and we need to scroll down to system restore. Here's restore settings. We'll touch that and let's see the system will automatically reboot uh, and restore all the settings back to the factory defaults. That's what we want. So we'll say system restore and don't turn the si uh, system off while this does this and this will take you back to the factory settings. This will take the system back to its factory default settings and make the radio like when you first took it out of the box. So let's choose a language and this time we're going to choose network mode and we'll say OK. And we can choose a phone setup, and that takes us out to the source. And we'll set the EQ to its flat setting, close out of that, 
Let's check the fade and balance control. It's our audio settings. See the fade and balance control changed to only balance. This is because when you're using the network mode settings, there, all of the speakers are considered to be front, so there is no uh, fade control to front and rear. There's only balance. We'll open that up, and it, the balance is set to the middle. That's where we want it. We'll go back up. And let's check the speaker output levels. There we go. Make sure they are all set to zero. Everything is set to zero here. That's where we want it. Okay, I've connected the high output from the AVHX 5800 BHS to the RTA. So let's start the pink noise track and we'll check out the high pass filter on the high range output. As you can see on the RTA screen, only the high output is playing to the RTA and the crossover point is about 8 kilohertz. All of the lower frequencies are filtered out. I have a wide range of crossover points to choose from and I can adjust the slope of the crossover from 6 to 12 to 18 or 24 dB per octave. When setting up a system like this one, it's critically important to understand the frequency response of the tweeter and mid-bass driver package that you'll be using and connecting to the amplifier. Now in this case, I'll be using a Pioneer GMD 9605. This is a five channel amplifier and I'll be connecting the tweeters to the A channel on the amplifier. Now the amplifier has its own built-in crossover, but I won't be using that crossover because I'm using the crossover on the AVHX 5800 BHS on the head unit. And the tweeter uh, is part of the package, the TSD 1730C package, and it comes with its own crossover as well. I will not be using this crossover either because again, I'll be using the crossover that is built into the head unit. In this case, the head unit is AVHX 5800 BHS. The available crossover points for the high pass filter are 1.25 kilohertz, 1.6, 2 kilohertz, Oops, let's go back to two here. There's two, 2.5, 3.15, four kilohertz, five kilohertz, 6.3, Eight kilohertz, twelve point or ten. There's ten kilohertz and then twelve point five. At each crossover point, I can adjust the slope of the crossover from six, twelve, eighteen, or twenty four dB per octave. And as we make those adjustments, you can see that the RTA is adjusting to the crossover. As a starting point, I'm going to choose an 8 kHz crossover with an 18 dB per octave slope. That means that the tweeter will play down to, but not much lower than 8 kHz. I'll keep that crossover point in mind when I set up the low pass filter for my mid bass driver. Now let's move on to the mid range or the band pass output. I've connected the RTA to the mid-range output on the AVHX 5800 BHS. So let's take a look at the crossover settings. For the mid-range output, we need to choose two different settings. We need to choose a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter. When we select both a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter on the same output, we create what is known as a bandpass output. As you can see on the RTA, this gives a response curve that looks like an arch in the middle of the frequency range. That's good because that's where the mid bass drivers will play. Nothing played back way up high and nothing played back way down low. 
Again, for this demonstration, I'll be connecting the uh, mid-range outputs from the AVHX 5800 BHS to this five-channel amplifier, the GMD Pioneer GMD 9605. I'll be connecting those outputs, the mid-range outputs, to the B channel on the amplifier. Now, uh, the, I could use the crossover on the amplifier, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the crossover built into the head unit. And the speaker, the mid-bass driver I'll be connecting here is part of the Pioneer TSD-1730C component package. Uh, and it comes with its own crossover, but I will not be using this crossover. I'll be using the crossover that is built into the head unit. The available low-pass filter crossover points for the mid-range are 1.25 kilohertz, 1.6, Two kilohertz, two point five, three point one five, four kilohertz, five kilohertz, six point three. 8, 10, whoops, that's a little too far, there's 10 kilohertz, and then 12.5. At each crossover point, I can adjust the slope of the crossover from 6, 12, 18, or 24 dB per octave. For my low pass filter on the mid range output, I'll start with an 8 kHz crossover with a slope of 24 dB per octave. I chose an 8 kHz starting point because it meets the 8K high pass crossover point of the tweeter. That means that the mid bass driver will play up to, but not much higher than 8 kHz. And that leaves no gap in the frequency response between the mid bass driver and the tweeter. And it's a good place to start to tune my system. Now, I'll switch to the high pass filter on the mid range output. The available crossover points are 25 Hz, 8 50, 60, 100, 125, 160, Oh, that's a little too far. Let's bring that back. There we go. 160, 200, 250 hertz. And at each crossover point, I have an adjustable slope of 6, 12, 18, or 24 dB per octave. And as I make those adjustments, you can see the RTA adjusting to the changes in the crossover point and the slope. For my high pass filter on the mid range output, I'm going to start with a crossover point of 100 hertz with a slope of 24 dB per octave. And I'm going to keep that crossover point in mind when I work on the subwoofer crossover. Now let's move on to the subwoofer or the low output. And I've connected the RTA to the low output on the AVHX 5800 BHS. Let's take a look at the crossover settings. For the subwoofer output, we need to choose a low pass filter so that only the low frequencies go out to the subwoofer. 
As you can see on the RTA, this gives us a response curve that is all the way over to the left side or the low side of the frequency range. That's where the subwoofer will play. Nothing played in the mid ranges or the high ranges. Now again, for this demonstration, I'll be connecting the subwoofer or the low outputs on the AVHX 5800BHS to the subwoofer input right here on the GMD9605, my five channel amp. Now this amplifier has its own crossover built in for the subwoofer, but I will not use the crossover built into the amp because I'm using the crossover built into the head unit. And I'll be connecting up the Pioneer TSSW3002S4. This is a shallow mount 12 inch subwoofer. The available crossover points for the subwoofer output are 25 hertz, 31.5, oh, a little too far there. There we go, 31.5, 40, 50, 63, 80, Oops. There's 80, 100, 125, 160, a little too far. There's 160. 200, 200, 200, and 250. At each crossover point, I can adjust the slope of the crossover from 12, 18, 24, or all the way up to 36 dB per octave. That's a really steep crossover slope and a really powerful audio adjustment tool. There's 12, 18, 18, 24, 30 and 36 dB per octave on the slope on the subwoofer. You can see how the response curve changes as we make changes to the crossover points and slope for each crossover point on the RTA. For a place to start tuning my system, I'll start with my low pass filter for the subwoofer set to 100 Hz and a 36 dB per octave slope. That matches the high pass filter I'll set for the mid bass driver and leaves no gap in the frequency response. You also have the option to reverse the phase of the subwoofer output. Experiment in your vehicle with the crossover point and the phase control to see what sounds best. Now let's take a look at the speaker output level controls for each individual speaker in this system. Here, you can see a representation of the two tweeters connected to the A channel on the amplifier in the system, the two mid-bass drivers connected to the B channel on the amplifier, and the subwoofer connected to the sub-input input on the amp. The level control gives us an independent volume control for each individual speaker in the system, and it allows us to make any given speaker a little louder or a little quieter compared to the other speakers in the system. This is a very powerful sound quality tool that can help to steer the stereo image across the front of the vehicle. In this demonstration, the RTA is connected to the right mid bass driver, and you can see the levels change as I make adjustments to the system. This doesn't change the crossover points or the slope, it merely changes the output level of the speaker. What are the best level settings to use? For the best audio quality, keep the level settings at zero or lower. Instead of boosting up one speaker, consider lowering the level of other speakers to help even out the system. By keeping each individual speaker level at zero or lower, you can turn up the master volume without fear of distortion. If you hear distortion, turn the level down a notch or two. You may be damaging your speakers. Lowering the output levels of a particular speaker or a group of speakers may remove that distorted sound. The key to setting up a great sounding car stereo system in your car is a little bit of patience. 
Take your time. Listen to your favorite music and make small adjustments to the system one speaker at a time. Sit back and listen a little more and make another small adjustment to a different speaker. When you get the settings right where you want them, don't be afraid to whip out your phone and snap a couple of pictures of your setup screen. The Pioneer AVHX 5800 BHS provides really powerful audio adjustment tools to help you set up a great sounding system in your vehicle. So sit back and enjoy the music.